five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one. I'm from a place where the girls are always looking pretty. You might have heard of us. We call it Shy City. We build champions here who define gritty. We don't do excuses. We don't do pity. Rose is coming back stronger. That's a guarantee. Cutler's coming back too. He's beastly. Throwing it to Marshall. The title's ours easily. Blackhawks are winning titles. Trophy looking massive. Don't forget about the Cubs, Sox, Crosstown Classic. With so much greatness, we gotta show bravado. You got your boys Ambro and Mike Mercado. Welcome into the Chicago Beat, everybody. I'm Mike Mercado. As always, with my best friend, Sticker Producer Man. It is Thursday, August 1st, 2013. Another beautiful day here in the city of Chicago. We have so much to get into today, guys. I've missed you. I haven't talked to you guys in so long. I cannot wait to get the show started. You can find us everywhere in the universe. We're at Twitter, at the Chicago Beat. You can find us on Facebook, at the Chicago Beat. You can see all our work at the thechicagobeat.yoloset.com. And, of course, fullscalesports.com. Sticker Producer Man, we have a... Fl- a f- Filled show today. We got Bears, we got Bulls, we got Cubs, we got White Sox, we got some national news to get into today. We got a lot to to talk about. Biggest thing I wanted to get into right away off the bat is about the Chicago Bears. You've seen uh, DJ Williams injury, you've seen uh, Bushrod injury uh, just this afternoon, or excuse me, I should say just this morning in practice. And the biggest thing that I wanted to get into right away is the expectations for this Bears team. See, because this Bears team last year finishes 10-6. and six. You get down to the wire, you win the last game you're supposed to, Minnesota beats Green Bay, they get into the playoffs. You've almost allowed that to happen by losing a lot of random BS games that they should have won. Let's take that away from for a second. Let's think about this Bears team very neutrally, at, not Chicago sports fans, not sports fans, just analytical. Let's just look at this. The Chicago Bears team right now has a lot of questions that need to be answered. And typically, whether it's in sports in life, whatever the occasion calls for, whenever somebody is being questioned or their ability is being questioned or they're being put into pressure, one of two things happen. You either succeed and overcome or you fail and fall flat in your face. That's what's going to happen to this Bears team one way or the other. You have a lot of defensive players who are already in their, I wouldn't say older, but they're in their 30s, 30-somethings, as they like to be called. You have a quarterback who's in his 30-somethings who now is on his last year of a contract. You have a first-year coach, a second-year GM, a lot of questions to be asked. You have turnover. You get rid of the last regime in Lovey Smith, who, for all all accounts, was better than Dick Jaron, Dave Wanstant, probably the best coach the Bears have had since Aditka. Think about that for a second now. You have a player like Brian Urlacher retiring. Nick Roach used to call the defense when Brian Urlacher was gone, now playing for the Raiders. There's people missing off this team now. There's elements missing off this team now. And I guess that's the most important part to really think about this Bears team is there's a lot of turnover. So it's not the same team. It's not the same team. Now you look on offense. You got Brandon Marshall, who, of course, has a, already has a deal, but he's a wide receiver. These guys are always trying to restructure their deals. They're always looking for the ball. So always, I always count on, on a, a wide receiver, a very good wide receiver, to have a good season. It's almost like a, uh, a shooting guard in the NBA. He's going to get his, his shots up. Brandon's going to get his touches. That There's no question about that. But it's Alshon Jeffrey time. It's time to see what he's made out of. If he's not just made out of glass. If, he, if his 6'3", 200-pound body frame is as good as Brandon Marshall. How about Earl Bennett? Is he going to establish himself as a legit wide receiver in this league? Matt Forte, is he going to show that he was worth the contract? And in this Mark Trustin offense, you have to think that this is his opportunity to do it. New offensive line. You sign Martellus Bennett who now has to show if he's worth that contract. And let's don't be mistaken, guys. In the NFL, it's about your value. These contracts aren't guaranteed. So every year you got to go out there and you got to you know, bust your ass and, and show that you're worth the money that the organization gave you. But keeping that all in mind, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because injuries can change all that. And we're seeing that with Bushrod. We've seen that with DJ Williams. Injuries can change the face of any franchise. Just... In Baltimore, with Dennis Pitta being out, that, that kills a red zone threat. And that's the defending Super Bowl champions who have a lot of turnover as it was already. Or as it was as it is already. Just look around the NFL. The NFL, had, everybody's talented. Everybody has talent in the NFL. It's, a, it's easier. It's an easier sport to turn around. But keeping that in mind, keeping what the Bears are doing, Jay Culler breaks his thumb again, sprains his knee, it's all over. 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good your talent is. If your quarterback isn't competent enough or healthy enough to win, that's not you're not going to win anything. Tell me the last time a quarterback not named Trent Dilfer has won a team without leading, leading as a quarterback. Baltimore, which is historically a defensive team, won that Super Bowl because of offense. Remember, San Francisco came back in that game after the lights went out. The Giants, who were, for the most part, had the, the, the dominant defensive line that was shaking up Tom Brady. It was that offense that made those last plays of the game. Not the defense. Not the defense has to get the last stop, of course. But, you know, facts are facts. The NFL is not a defensive sport anymore. And they've done that on purpose because they don't want people getting hurt. That's a lot to get into. It's, there's a lot to get into with this football season coming around. No more Sundays without football. We just passed that. So, again, you know, you know football's the king of this country. So we know what the Bears are looking like. What's the rest of the division, though? We talk about that next here on the Chicago Beat. Because me and Secret Producer Man have been going back and forth about this. I mean, just absolutely killing each other about this. He truly believes that the Bears will be the third best team in the division. That's fine. I mean, it's a logical point because you have Aaron Rodgers over in Green Bay and Minnesota was a playoff team last year. But I ask you now, what has Green Bay done this offseason that makes you say they're better than last year? If anything, they've decreased. They've lost Greg Jennings. Sure, he's been injury prone. That's a, that's a weapon. That's a Super Bowl weapon right there. Aaron Rodgers is sacked just as, and rushed just as many times as Jay Culler is. Again, one injury changes everything. And now you want to tell me Minnesota. Minnesota is going to rely on Christian Ponder to take them to the playoffs. Again. They made the playoffs by one game at the end of the season. Adrian Peterson had a monster season. But we've seen with running backs, guys. One hit, one season, one cut. It's all, it, it, could change, it could change the career. So you're banking, if you're Minnesota, you're banking on a running back. If you're in Green Bay, you're banking on a quarterback. If you're Detroit, you're just banking that you're not, you don't act like Detroit anymore because you go to the playoffs one year and then you win four games the next year and then you give Matthew Stafford a huge contract? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know all Matthew Stafford is is Calvin Johnson. That's all it is because I've yet to see Matt Stafford do anything worth, worth going home to because he hasn't. And I've been somebody who says, give the Georgia kid a break. Let's see what he does. I mean, the guy has an arm. But as far as I'm concerned, he's another ESPN product. He's another national media product. He's, got, he's the SEC quarterback with the long, long hair and the big arm. Jay Culler doesn't get any of that same love. And Jay Culler is just as talented as Matthew Stafford. And we've seen that with a Brandon Marshall. Now, the difference between a Matthew Stafford and a Jay Culler is Jay Culler likes to pat the ball. He thinks he's a dog for some reason. That's okay. I, I, that is what it is. I mean, these quarterbacks who are who they are. People want to give color grief for being injury prone. Look at Matthew Stafford. So I've just gone through the division, and I've given you the questions of each team. You have a new regime in the Bears. You've lost talent in Green Bay. You're the Detroit Lions, and Minnesota's relied on a running back. Two of these teams are making the playoffs, I believe. Because I think Aaron Rodgers is way too good not to take Green Bay into the playoffs. So when you're thinking about that, who wins the division, though? Because I don't think Green Bay wins the division. 
I don't think they're good enough. I don't think their defense is good enough. Charles Woodson is away from Green Bay, so you know they're not going to be getting easy touchdowns from the Bears anymore. So all that, I, all that says the Bears should be the favorites in the division, but they're not. They're not the favorite because they have one thing that all these other teams do not have. That's inconsistency. Adrian Peterson is great. Adrian Peterson was great when he came into the league. Adrian Peterson is going to be great when he leaves the league. Aaron Rodgers was great when he got into the league. Aaron Rodgers is still great, and Aaron Rodgers will be great when the league is over, when he's out of the league, excuse me. Same thing with Calvin Johnson. Can you say that about the Bears? Can you say Jay Culler was great when he came in and Jay Culler was great when he leaves? How about Matt Forte, Brandon Marshall? You can't say that, right? You said that about the defense, and that's why that defense took a team to the 2006 Super Bowl, and they almost beat Peyton Manning, except for another quarterback situation with Rex Grossman. And it didn't matter. You could argue all you want. I see it on Twitter at the Chicago Beat and on Facebook. Kyle Orton was not winning that Super Bowl for the Bears that year. So it, 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 I, don't, I don't like these arguments that I get about why I get with people about Jay Culler. Because it's, no, it's a lose-lose situation. Because, yeah, you could say he has all the talent in the world, but he hasn't won anything. And vice versa. He hasn't won anything, but he has all the talent in the world. And that's the most frustrating thing about this Bears team. Hell, you could say that that's the most frustrating thing about Chicago in general. Am I right, secret producer, man? That's all it is. Huh? You got Cubs, White Sox, Bulls, Bears. It doesn't matter. The only team that doesn't give you a headache is the Blackhawks. And even them, they're almost giving you a heart attack. <laughs> 17 uh, seconds in between two goals in the Stanley Cup. It's amazing, though. We got more coming up here on the Chicago Beat. Where if you're not from there but you visit, I think you always got to keep in touch with it. You can just feel like the energy, the love that the fans or the people have for each other in the city. And when you retire, a long way off yet, but when you retire, how would you like to be remembered? As a winner. Some interesting words from Derrick Rose. The Chicago Beat is brought to you by the Illinois Center for Broadcasting, where broadcasting careers begin. Don't forget, there's two beautiful locations, one in downtown Chicago and one of the suburbs in Lombard. 12 months is all it takes. If you finish this program, you will get a degree in broadcasting that can lead you to any field in television, radio, media, internet, whatever it is you're into, we got it. At the Illinois Center for Broadcasting, dial 630-916-1700 or go on beyondair.com. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting, where broadcasting careers begin. So... Before we got into uh, the little spot right here, you heard Derrick Rose on an interview a few weeks back talking about uh, he was, he's doing this Adidas tour, okay, because you know the return, it's actual real this time, and he'll be back, which, by the way, uh, if you're following us at the Chicago Beat on Twitter or on Facebook at the Chicago Beat, you know game one, October 29th in Miami, TNT, Tuesday night, Bulls versus Heat. It's the return versus the ring ceremony. I don't need to say much more than that. But Derrick Rose has his interview on his Adidas tour, and you can find it on our Facebook page, on Twitter. You can find it almost everywhere on YouTube as well. He's, he has, he's asked directly, who's the best player in the NBA? He says Derrick Rose. And they even ask him, not LeBron James. And he goes on and says why LeBron James is great. But I think that's what's different about Derrick Rose compared to a lot of players in the NBA. There's only a handful of players, a handful of players in the National Basketball Association who would sit there and say what Derrick did. A Kobe would, a Durant would, a Derrick would. But all that tells me is 
when I see that video, maybe I'm looking too much in it. I'm not Batman. I can't, you know, re- look at a video and tell you if somebody's guilty or not. I'm not, not going to pretend to know that, to pretend that that's what I do. But what I can tell you is I could see a killer instinct in Derrick Rose that was missing while he was talking during his rehab. He does look to have more confidence in himself. Now, a lot of people say, how can you tell? Derrick is a very stone-faced kind of person. You can see it in the eyes of a person. You can see it in the tone. You can see it in the way they're postured. He knows he needs to be great. He knows there's greatness in him. And the Bulls are going to need that, guys. Because people are, are bashing the Bulls, not making any signings. But as far as I'm concerned, a team with Joakim Noah, Luol Deng, and Derrick Rose is still a foundation good enough to win an NBA title. Now, you're also relying, if you're talking about the Miami Heat, if you're on that bandwagon, which is fine. They are the best team in the NBA. Or at least they were last year, and they were the year before that. You're relying on Dwayne Wade's need to stay healthy, LeBron James to continue this freakish momentum that he's been on the last few years. You're hoping Chris Bosh has more than one rebound in an in a NBA final game, and a bunch of role players. So I'm sitting here, and I understand. I get it, because I've seen it, that Miami is great. But Miami isn't great. LeBron is great. Dwayne Wade is good enough. And Chris Bosh takes enough space. They get big shots by, from certain players at given, any given time, and they were given a game. So all that, and people still want to say the Bulls, the Pacers, are not good enough to win an NBA title. As far as I'm concerned, and you're hearing it first here, August 1st, 2013, on the Chicago Beat, the Bulls will play the Indiana Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals, barring injury. Barring injury. And I don't see, I don't see how anybody can disagree with that. They have the size, they have the defense, and they have enough offense to win. Miami needs to stay healthy. Miami needs to get bigger. Then they will beat. Then they will have a clear road to the NBA Finals. But even if, let's go down the list. Let's go down to the future a little bit. Bulls and Pacers go seven game either way. Miami finds a way to the Eastern Conference Finals or to the, uh, the uh, semifinals of the, conference, of the conference. Okay, And they meet at Indiana or Chicago. That's a set six, seven game series regardless. Then they're going to have to play them again, another team like that. So it's another six and seven game series. And then if they play a team like Houston, San Antonio again, even a Golden State, and is that in these? They may win, but it will take them 21 games to win an NBA final just between three teams. So if you're banking on that, good for you. I'm glad you have all that hope in the world for the Miami Heat. I I hope you do because I have just as much hope that the Bulls can do that. The Bulls can win those amount of games just as much as Miami does. Again, the biggest difference, and it's a huge one, It's number six LeBron James doesn't play for any other team. But there is a number one who plays in the city of Chicago, and that's Derrick Rose. And there's no arguing. There's no arguing. Even if you want to say that Derrick Rose's MVP was given because people didn't want to see LeBron win it anymore, then he was the second best player in the NBA. He was the second best player in the NBA right up into that injury. The Bulls were heading to an NBA Eastern Conference Finals matchup with Miami had Derrick Rose not got hurt. And you saw it against Philadelphia. The, the Bulls were just too much when they're healthy. The Bulls are almost too much for a lot of teams when they're healthy. But there's a lot that goes into that. You want to talk about Tom Thibodeau? That's fine. You want to talk about the depth? That's fine because the depth is the best in the NBA if you ask me. But it doesn't matter if each guy is playing 35 minutes a game. If you want to talk about health, that's, that's a logical point about the, Bear, uh, about the Bulls. And it goes down to sports in general, man, how important health is, how important chemistry is. And those are words that I hate just throwing out there because they're very lazy, but it's true. It's true. You don't, you don't want to make a move for move's sake. And you saw that in baseball. The Cubs and White Sox were, just, were not making moves just to clear up roster space, just to get rid of contracts. They had a purpose and a goal in mind to do so. So I think it's a very interesting, it's, a, it's an interesting scenario the Bulls are on right now. Because now you also have reports talking about Gar Foreman and, uh, and uh, Tom Thibodeau having the worst relationship between a head coach and a GM. And if that's the case, then what, what exactly are you doing over there in the Birdo Center? What's going on? Because championship teams don't go through that. You don't hear about Greg Popovich getting into it like that. I understand Tom Thibodeau's a hard ass. Gar Foreman also has an ego, and you have to in these type of businesses. But you got to hope that they know, that they understand what the goal is. The goal is Derrick Rose to get back healthy and for this Bulls team to cash in and win an NBA title. And in a city that we've seen cores of young talent win a championship in the Blackhawks. And we're seeing cores being developed in Chicago with the Cubs. And you're seeing that starting to head over for the White Sox. So now you're building a core. We, We went through the process of rebuilding with the Bulls. It's time to cash in, guys. That's just a fact. You know, I'm already going to get a little heated right now. Facts are that they need to cash in and win an NBA title. 
Because Miami went ahead of them and said, we're going to do it. We got the lottery ticket. We're going to win. And they cashed in for two titles in two years. The Bulls have held on to their assets for too long. They have been too weak to make decisions. They've been too narrow-minded to make decisions, and yet have still found the way to be competitive. And if only, if only one move is made, if only one other decision is made, the hesitation is not there, they might be NBA type champions because they have a winning lottery ticket in their pocket right now. And they need a cash in. Because if they do not win a championship in the next seven years, I'm giving them seven years. If they do not cash it for one Larry O'Brien trophy, failure. And that is just fact. We got more coming up here on the Chicago Beat. You can follow the Chicago Beat on Twitter at the Chicago Beat. You can like us on Facebook at the Chicago Beat. And of course, you can see all our work at the Chicago And for everything national news, fullscalesports.com. So the White Sox and the Cubs don't do too much at the trade deadline. They make most of their moves before the trade deadline. And I've seen on Twitter, I've, I've been asked some questions. What do you think about the moves? What do you think it doesn't mean for the future? Frankly, the Cubs got a nice deal for guards so they got a couple people up here they actually got uh Oltz is that his name that might be coming up uh in the September call-ups most of the guys the Cubs have in their system right now and got from this mad guards the trade from what it sounds like uh Len Casper was actually on WSCR 670 the score in Chicago this morning he was talking that most of these guys won't be September call-ups until next season but I think it's an interesting point to talk about if you're a Cub fan that this team has blown over 21 games they're about nine games under 500 they're about a 500 team, guys, if it wasn't for blown saves, if it wasn't for a Russell or a uh, Marmo and a Kevin Gregg, who's had a pretty nice season, but it's kind of came back down to earth. You've seen that the Cubs are, are going to be a 500 team next year, and I think that's a bright side for Cub fans. Starlin Castro starting to get out of his funk. Is he part of the future? Anthony Rizzo starting to get out of his funk. Is he as good as he's been uh, t- talked about by this Cubs management team? Hell, this Cubs management team has been in love with him since Boston and in San Diego. So, I mean, that's a, to me, that's probably the biggest storyline is how much of Anthony Rizzo is true greatness and how much is it just being smoke blowing up our butts. And then if you're a White Sox fan, I mean, I understand the frustration, but better late than never, guys. Let, just keep that in mind. I understand Jake Peavy was a nice, nice commodity. He had some years left on him. He was a good pitcher. He's a great, uh, a great dugout kind of guy, but... Facts are this. At some point, the White Sox need to rebuild. And with Kenny Williams and Jerry Reinsdorf, they don't like using those words. They don't like spending money. But you need to make these moves. You need, you need to rebuild, guys. Because you don't want to see this type of baseball on the south side. And I, don't, I know I'm going to get this. I know I'm going to get You're a Sox hater. You're a Sox basher. You're not the Cubs, guys. You're not going to get a following just because you play at the cell. You don't have a Wrigley Field. You don't have the type of fans that the Cub fans have. You need to put a winning product up there. And that may be a good thing. A lot of people may say that's a good thing about Sox fans is that they, they're not fair. I mean, depending on your question, your definition of fair weather, but that they're not going to go see a bad product. But uh, you, you also have to look forward to a couple things. Gordon Beckham, as much as he's disappointed when it comes to the bat, it's an awesome second baseman. It's an awesome goal, uh, gold glover. Chris Sale is a starting pitcher in the All-Star game, guys. And then you're the Cubs. Jeff Samarja, who knows if he's going to come or go, but that's another commodity that you have. Anthony Rizzo, Starlin Castro, and then your minor league system is actually being developed very well. So I think it was moves that needed to be made. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It's, it's frustrating to watch, no doubt. I think this season, and I want to hear your opinion at the Chicago Beat on Twitter and on Facebook, this season's been worse for the White Sox and White Sox fans. I think it's hurt them more because of how competitive they were last year to see how bad they are this year. To see one of the better defensive teams last year become the worst team defensively this year. To see bats that you thought were going to be a lot better that were exploding last season are not. It's a lot to get into. It's a lot. And September call-ups are right around the corner in about a month. So we're going to start seeing some talent, some future talent here in Chicago. 
We wrap up shop next here on the Chicago Beat. For the best youthful look at sports, news, and entertainment, keep it here on the Chicago Beat. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the Thursday. I hope you guys all have a beautiful weekend. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at The Chicago Beat. You can like us on Facebook at The Chicago Beat. You can see all our past work at thechicagobeat.yellowsite.com. And, of course, for everything national news, visit fullscalesports.com. For Secret Producer Man, I'm Mike Mercado from our beautiful ICB Lombard Studios. We will see you next time here on The Chicago Beat. Bye, guys. You're listening to Mike Mercado here on The Chicago Beat. You can find us at thechicagobeat.yolosite.com or fullscalesports.com. You can follow us on Twitter at The Chicago Beat. You can also like us on Facebook at The Chicago Beat.